So now this is waterproof. We have acetone. You acetone. You're going to put acetone? Right here, right now. What's up, guys? Today, I want to introduce you to a new finish. It's called Clean Armor. It's actually been around the aerospace industry for a while, but it's new to the woodworking industry. A while back, we went to the International Woodworking Fair, and that's where we first saw Clean Armor. What caught our attention was that they were using UV lights to cure the finish. This meant that cure times were gonna be fast. I'm gonna split this video into two parts. For those of you who just want the need to know info, the short and condensed version is at the end of this video. However, I recommend watching the whole thing because Matt knows a ton about finish work. I learned a lot in just the couple hours he spent with us. And do us a favor, for the boys, hit the like button. Let's get into it. The main reason that we are on this quest to find the right finish is that our customers expect the top quality materials and something durable that's gonna last a long time. Today, we had the pleasure of meeting with the inventor of Clean Armor. This is a product we saw at IWF in Atlanta, and it blew us away. Matt, why do people want Clean Armor? This technology was designed for the finisher, uh, built by a finisher for finishers. VOC free, there are no carcinogens, no neurotoxins, no hazardous air pollutants called HAPS. So it was engineered specifically to accomplish three basic principles, cleaner, which is safer for human contact in our environment, stronger, and then of course faster. Uh, time is money. So today we have two ash butcher blocks right in front of us, and we're gonna show you how to prep and apply for both gloss and matte finish. How should someone prep the wood before getting started? I take it down to about a 320 okay. uh, if I got ready to go ahead and finish. All right, so we're gonna start the process. We're gonna start at 80 grit and work our way up to 320 grit. So what's the next step after sanding? Well, uh, we're gonna do two different coatings, uh, finish coats today. We'll do a gloss and we'll do a matte finish. Uh, and these will be applied by hand. Clean Armor's wood systems can be brushed, sprayed, or rolled. We're gonna start with the sealer. Awesome. So what I wanna do first is I'm gonna seal this so I'm gonna grab just standard rags here, have them at the ready. Oh yeah, some dust definitely comes off there, huh? Yep, a little bit, but that's okay. Clean Armor is a, an inert polymer resin system. So it's an all weather system. We've shot and applied this in the dead of summer in Kansas with a humidity at 97%. I've stood in 112 degree Fahrenheit spray booths and this sprays just like water. So I will go ahead and take the 710 sealer. It's always good. Uh, there's no catalyst, no additives on this particular one. This is a spray ready RTS material uh, built for, for spray guns and whatnot for production work, but it can be readily used as a hand application system. All Clean Armor systems were engineered and designed to run at ambient room temperature or above. It's just the best performance. Since it's a solid material, resin-based system, everything flows better when it's warm. Yeah. Everything cold slows down when it's cold. Just like molasses in winter, right? right. The old adage. Yeah. If you've got sunlight or indirect sun, I've even cured this material in Savannah, Georgia, raining outside, not drowning rain, but obviously cloud cover, rain droplets. There was enough ambient daylight out there to cure this readily in three minutes as the water was dropping on the sample board. That's there awesome. You know. We are gonna test that. So what I would do here is, uh, I'm just gonna make this simple for us. I'll go ahead and um, we're gonna pour off some sealer here. I'll use a standard, very inexpensive, get them at Home Depot, get them at paint stores, little paint pads. I'm gonna move it with our grain. This resin actually saturates. It's designed to soak into the wood fibers. So they'll soak into silica base. They'll soak into plastic materials. So they readily have been designed to built into the fibrous materials of wood. So I'm waiting for this to actually saturate down. So this gives a good anchor point. It actually saturates in all the available wood fibers in between the grains here, right? You see it falling into the wood grain. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna go ahead and build anchor points so we're getting penetration, we're getting anchorage, and this locks this material in. So it becomes a permanent 
part of, of this ash surface here. There is no shrink on this polymer system at all. So once it's integrated and put in, being non-permeable, you can stack on top as, as high as your build spec wants to go. The 700 series wood system is designed for your general purpose interior and exterior wood coating system. This is 100% solid material, guys. So this does not, uh, this will not at all shrink back. You will get 1,608 square feet at one mil in one gallon of material. That's a lot. Most finishes in wood coatings are somewhere in the neighborhood of the mid 20s, maybe 30%. I have seen some varathanes and marine varnishes and things like that that claim to be around 40% solids. But truly, by the time they shrink back and dry days later, um, you've really put on average maybe 25 to 30% of a solid coating down. The rest of it evaporates out in the air. You can cut yeah. this material with isopropyl alcohol. This is its reducing agent, its cleaning agent. You clean your tools, your equipment, your hands, and you reduce with it as well. All right, so I'll just take a standard straight edge here, make sure you're nice and clean. And you know, you don't have to really, you know, do a lot of pressure on it. I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep this down here. And you can see how much extra material that puddle. Oh, wow. Okay. Made a little mess here for you, but we can get that cleaned up. That's okay. That doesn't bother us. For a lot of folks that want that real dry look, but they do want impregnation and they do want a seal coat, I suggest this application. Now, right there could constitute, in my mind, a very well waxed and oiled butcher block top. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. If you look right behind us here, that's the exact look, but in my opinion, that has a better sheen to it. Right. This right here has three coats of oil and a coat of wax on it. Right. And, and that's this... been replaced with one coat of Clean Armor 700 sealer, uh, 710 sealer system. This one over here, we're going to leave, uh, we're going to sand this one. Uh, we'll also degloss this one if you'd like. You do not have to sand in between coats. Perfect. This has been integrated for in inner coat adhesion. Uh, chemically, it recognizes itself. Uh, it's almost impossible to separate it. Uh, although best practices in old school, we degloss and sand in between coats. Uh, I think we're ready right now. We'll go ahead and I'll make sure that all of our products and tools we don't want to cure are out of the light. And we'll go ahead. And if you want to start the clock, we're going to give that two minutes. You got the clock. So ultraviolet light is something that we experience when we walk outside. Um, this UV light spectrum is in the highest band in A, so there's A, B, and C for UV frequencies. We're right up there in the safe zone next to visible light. So this is what we actually experience when we walk outside along with, with the others. But this is the softest and the, 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 the less harmful of right. the UV light spectrum. So we have chosen to trigger Clean Armor's polymer technology with the UVA. We have set the, the materials and the coating systems. Once they start to see enough of the UVA light, they'll start converting from a liquid to a solid, and I have it timed to be fully cured at at least quarter inch deep uh, in 120 seconds. This bar light above us here that we're using to cure is a 395 uh, LED system. Uh, it's got 60 degree lenses on it, which means it's casting a 60 degree net of UV. With this system, we're not going for high intensity. No. We're going for no. an even spread, right. nice, gentle cure. Nice, gentle cure, um, and you need very little UV light to do that. This is probably, like I said, it's anywhere in the neighborhood of maybe 7 to 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is not a whole lot of light. I do not have a certification for FDA approval on this mm -hmm. uh, for food consumption, right. food not, preparation. It's not a food prep. It's not a food prep. Tables, but tables, countertops, countertops interior grade furniture, all of it across the board. Well, the interior furniture people are, are gonna love this. Um, so this right here is 100% is solid. This one here is 100% solid. Uh, yep, didn't even need to use the handheld. So we can scratch it hard. Really? Right, I mean, dig oh, your finger wow. down into it. Get in there and get, chase after that. That's, not my middle finger because I that one's coming off actually. Did you get that beat up? Uh, Planer gave her a pinch. Oh boy. Yeah, scared the shit out of me. All right, so this is another UVA light that we can get. Can uh, I scratch this one too? Yeah, it's done. 
Oh, dang. You're getting the oil finish with scratch resistance. Yes. You could take all this outside, even without using the cure lights, just open up the doors and wheel them outside, and three months later, you've got the same cure rate you have here. So we do have. That light there probably is $450 US. Be here in two to three weeks if you ordered one. That gives you eight square feet of a curing pattern at six to seven feet distance. So this will do a nice size table. Go ahead and knock this one off with six. And let's knock this one off with 320. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and... Um, Perfect. And reapply. Okay. All right, so I hit, hit this one with 600, hit this one with 320. I already wiped away the dust with the, okay. with the brush Perfect. and the rag. Very good. How's it look? Uh, if, how's it feel? Feels great. Yeah, I was amazed at how it feels. So. It's a nice, smooth feel. I would go ahead and instead of using the application pad that we did, stain pads. Just foam wrapped in some microfiber. Right. Uh, so I would go ahead and hand burnish the last coat on this one. We're probably a good 80, 90% grain fill. This surface right here uh, is really close to being a non-permeable polymer sealed surface. This one here, uh, we're not going to be spraying today, but if you look close enough, you can see where we got the, the hard grain is actually a little bit deeper and the, uh, the soft grain is actually filled. So, so I'm gonna, we're gonna run one more sealer coat on this with the, hand, the pad applicator. We're gonna hand apply the final on this one and this will be completed and finished. That's ready to go into service. This one here will take two more applications. And again, any excess material that you have after your projects, cure it in the sunlight and it becomes a non-hazardous material, can go right out with a normal garbage pickup. So this is the same sealer? Same sealer. Now it's an optically clear polymer system. It enhances the looks of the wood, the real colors start to shine through. But again, it's an open system, so you don't have to get excited. This finishing should be fun, and it hasn't been. No, it hasn't. For too long. I'm still amazed how you just kind of came up with this. Not that you kind of came up with it, but it's like you learned about all these different things and then made a product out of it, you know? It's like... Well, my background is in restoration. Uh, hard surface restoration on multiple industry product lines. Metal plastics and woods uh, right. across the spectrum. Uh, started when I was a young man. They would hire me to come in and restore them. So from incremental damage all the way to refinish. So I got early on in my career, got exposed to the plethora of products that we build and, and the materials that we use to protect them with and coat them with. Uh, so I got pretty familiar with everything that was out there. And I had to use those. I had to re-simulate problem was is that most of these products are designed and, and built and manufactured in controlled environments. Right. I'm out in the field where it's actually in service and I've got to bring that technology in field where I'm not in a controlled environment, uh, which then you can expose yourself and others and the environment around you with all kinds of hazardous things and you have to get pretty creative about how to contain that. There had to be a cleaner, stronger, faster way to do this. And uh, gentlemen, it's taken Closing in on about 32 years. But I'll go ahead and very gingerly just take off my excess. Now, if you wanted that a little bit of a drier look, because right now, if you liked what you saw, mm -hmm. you, could, you could cure this and freeze it in place. I'm going to go back one more because we want a real dull look, and I'm just removing any excess. And you take it to where you actually like it, and then be quick on the light. As soon as you see what you like, go ahead and turn your lights on. And you mentioned earlier, you know, scratch-free butcher block tops. Um, it's almost like that's, you know, uh, not a thing. It isn't it a thing. Been. It isn't a thing. It's with not the a thing. With well, the oil finishes, right. um, you it, get scratches. Exactly. They, they've got, they're horrible um, for performance. So, but this is a 100% converted polymer system once you cure it. And so it is scratch free. I mean, especially for the traffic and the wear and tear you'll see on uh, island tops and butcher blocks. Oh yeah, this looks great. So let's go ahead and cure it. All righty. What's your time at? Lights back on. We, we glued it to your top. There you go. It's okay, it's Tyrone's top. It's Tyrone's top. It's Tyrone's top. <laughs> okay, when you feel slick and nice and cool, we're cured. Because it dries. And curious what are we and at converts. Now? Nice.
Okay, I want you to try five, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a little water. So we built a finish here that's non-permeable. It cannot take in water. So now this is waterproof. And I'm going to prove that to you by, do we have some, uh, I got some alcohol here. Do we have some solvent here, MEK? Do we got acetone? We have acetone. We got acetone. You're going to put acetone? Right here, right now. All right. Acetone? Yeah, strongest stuff you got. Oh, will it? I want you to pour right there. Can I, can I put metal prep on there? Sure. Metal prep? Okay. This guy's talking. That is crazy. Sorry, acetones. <laughs> Stiff girl. All right, acetone. Fortune. It's going. I just, I just don't want to splash. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's a cleaning agent. Son of a gun. <laughs> it's chemical resistant. I can't even get aircraft paint stripper to pull it. Okay, that was impressive. That was impressive. This is IPA alcohol. This coating isn't an hour old. Now, could it take, could it take something like gasoline? You throw gasoline on it all day long. It is chemical resistant, acidic resistant all the way to the pH zeros. I can't even get aircraft paint stripper to fog it. Well, that was think impressive. About it that I didn't expect you to do this today. Yeah, I didn't I expect want to that. show the chemical I expected a little water. Well, said, we'll go water next. Now, no, we're, now we're going to deburr it. Well, I mean, here. if, if, if right. acetone doesn't touch it. No, I just don't Then water is not going to touch it. Nothing in your kitchen, nothing in your home, nothing that we see in commercial uses uh, with different cleaners and everything else, it's impermeable to it. We even have versions, if you request it, that have antimicrobial agents built into it. So, oh, you know what? That's awesome for countertops, actually. It's perfect for countertops and touch spaces. Okay, so we're going to put a little water on this because um, this actually likes water, the pads do. Um, so go ahead and smear that around and I would just go back and forth. Now if you look at the water, it's beating. So this system is hydrophobic now. So it's all sitting on top. There's nothing integrating it in. But yeah, you're ready to ship. Isn't that a soft feel touch? There'll be more fingerprints on this because you can't stop feeling it. That is nice. <laughs> oh yeah. There it is. There's your butcher block in a 20 to 30 degree sheen. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. There you are. That is, that is nice. This is definitely impressive. The acetone bath just sold me. Like, in a, if I wasn't already sold, that was super impressive. You do that to any one of our tables right now? Done. Done. Now that's, that's yeah. the fingernail polish remover that has been the kryptonite to any fine yeah. piece of furniture ever been built since Absolutely. they decided to start painting fingernails. And if someone were to scratch this, like they took a set of keys, drag it across, right? Repairing this is quick sand. Superior. Put another coat on. Sand it back. Cure it, yeah. Buff it out. Yeah, that's awesome. Right, hand applied on station in field. They don't have to truck the furniture back out to a finish shop, get in yeah. line. So a lot of claims were made, and you know us. We are going to put this finish to the test. Plus, we are going to compare it against other products. Matt even said clean armor will hold up outdoors. We'll see about that. And now, here's the quick and dirty. We have found the ultimate finish. It's called clean armor. This is a cross-linked polymer UV cured coating that can be used on woods, metals, and plastics. This finish features marine grade durability, abrasion and impact resistance, and is VOC free. Matthew, the creator and CEO of Clean Armor, spent 20 years developing this incredible finish so that it would check all of the durability boxes while being 100% safe and crystal clear. Prep work is very important with this finish because of how optically clear it is. Once your sanding is out of the way, 
be sure to get rid of all the fine dust. Clean armor can be applied with a sprayer, brush, or roller. For this demonstration, they sprayed it. One of the cool things about this finish is that it can be built up layer by layer until you get to your desired thickness. You can leave it thin for the real wood feel or build it up like an epoxy-like top coat. However, it's important to lay down even layers and fully cure in between coats. As I said before, this finish uses a UV LED to cure and it only takes two minutes for full durability. What's great is that the handheld lights are super cheap and you can use overhead LED strips to cure big projects with ease. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more real woodworking content.